Hi everybody, this is Andy. It's the uh, early early evening of July 17, 2020, or late afternoon actually. Uh, so where we left off in the last video was I did a quick walkthrough of some data entry into the Excel model. And as a quick reminder, how I designed the Excel module, a uh, model, is that uh, there's really three different tabs where you enter in data. Uh, there's a profile tab where you're in like the two key pieces, the birth date and the IELTS score. Uh, the, uh, well, the relatives tab, which uh, because in Canada the, you, you get points for certain programs if you have relatives. And then I guess the, the main tab would be the work history tab. And uh, we walked through a, a, a quick data entry uh, of some of some uh, work of work history, so uh, I was going to leave it at that. Uh, but I decided, you know, now that I've shown the uh, the simple data entry and release the file, I thought it would make sense for me to at least uh, sh uh, comment on three of the main formulas that I've been using, and because I know I won't have too much time the next few weeks, but. I uh, just wanted to give everybody like a sense of my, my thought as to how, how this all works. Okay, so the three formulas that I've been using is uh, really um, one for the reference tables and that would be used, for example, uh, when you key in the IELTS score, I, then the Excel formulas return a, a score for a CLB level. And then the uh, work durations, uh, I use a date diff function where you're entering the start date and the end date. And then uh, where, when I uh, uh, summarize all that, it's, I use either a uh, sum ifs or for some, uh, for some streams that require uh, continuous work, I, look, I use the max ifs function to look for the longest period of, of time to see if that, to see if that qualifies. Um, so, for example, when you type in the uh, IELTS score here, and, I'll, and then uh, for French too, uh, what I do is uh, I have a big table here. Uh, so over here is that I keep a table of the IELTS score here. I keep the CLB level here, and then uh, the uh, associated points. As you, you can see, so, you know, that's how I, I can uh, calculate all the various streams, all the points and, and whether that person qualifies just based on everything in this, in this one, one table. Okay. Uh, the next thing is uh, the date diff formulas. And uh, this, I'll talk about this in a, in a separate video, but I want to just quickly show that when you in, enter in the start date and the end, end date, uh, there's formulas over here that, that calculate the, uh, the time duration in months between the start date and the end, end date. And I'll talk about this later on, like I said, but uh, the different streams in the Canadian immigration system, they only count uh, work uh, past, like up to a certain point in, in time. Uh, for example, um, I wrote them all down actually. For example, um, the uh, Canadian experience class, they, it only calculates uh, the uh, three years full-time and part-time work, work experience. So for example, if you work from three and a half years ago to two and a half years ago, it's only going to count the, the six months. So that's why I've broken it out over here. And I'll save the, the detailed um, comment on that for a, a, a later video. And then finally, uh, the sums and, and the maxes. So what, then what I do is because this is just an, an, uh, an aggregation here, down here, um, what I do with the sum is and the, and the maxes is that depending on what you key in these columns, that's when I count them. So for example, uh, the Canadian experience class, I think I'm only counting uh, work experience for knock zero A and, and B. 
Whereas, uh, for example, for federal school trade, I'm only counting that work if it's within that that knock uh, type. Okay, so that's the that's the difference there. And that's how I use these sublifts. So, for example, let me show you one. Uh, I was trying to use uh, do another way of, of aggregating them. So. Well, not another way of aggregating them, but I put them into this one tab here because I also wanted to keep kind of like a dashboard where in the rows I show the, the different duration calculation and then by the columns I, I, I'm counting it by the, the different filters. So over here I've got the part time and over here I've got the full, full time. So it looks a little kludgy, but so for example in this cell, and I'll see if I can zoom in really quick. Uh, in, in this cell, I have the submiss. So I'm summing one of those columns from the, the, other, uh, the other tab. And in this submiss, I'm saying um, if, if it's a NOC 0, A, or B, and if it's in Canada, then I'm calculating that, that column. So you know how I'm calculating the, the work duration is actually broken out into two parts. I had it in, in one large formula, but I realized uh, how I've broken it out this way now, it actually improves the, the accuracy uh, greatly. And again, the reason why I have so many columns is that there's just that many types of um, dur duration um, types in the various uh, PNP programs. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. I hope, uh, hopefully that's uh, enough for everybody to uh, understand what I was trying to do there. Uh, so, and the, this model now is a little different from what I had re released a few, few months ago, but I think with, with this, um, if you wanted to play around with that on your own, I think it's a little more logical now as, as opposed to where I had, you know, these type of columns where I had a breakdown for CEC, part-time, full-time, federal school trade. Now I've just got, you know, the basic formulas here, and then I've got, and another area, additional filter to, to uh, summarize a little more accurately. All right, thank you very much. I hope everybody is do everybody's doing well. I'll see you all soon. Uh, my exam, my entry exam is on the August the 9th, so I'm not sure how much time I'm, I'll have to make another video, but um, if you have any questions, uh, do feel free to reach out to me. Thanks.